you guys can usually expect Ford or GM cars to be on the channel, but a Saab? What? Yeah, I got a Saab to work on today. So what is up everybody, good morning to you, welcome to this installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs. I want to thank you for joining me today, and today we have another outside car, outside of the, you know, three cars that I usually have in the driveway. We have another outside repair to do today, this time it's a little, it's a little more extensive. This is a 2006 Saab 9.3. 2.0 T that's right it's got the turbo in it and today we need to replace the valve cover gaskets uh, on this two liter four cylinder along with that we need to do an oil change top off some coolant and I don't know, I'm just gonna look uh, kind of look a couple of other things over while it's here uh, it's my stepsister's car it's got a hundred and eighty six thousand miles on it I think and she Loves this thing. Oh, look at this. Hey, buddy. Oh, bye, buddy. So that being said, it is, uh, what time is it? It's 10 in the morning, and uh, it's already like 75 degrees out here, and it's supposed to be like 85 to 90 today, with a good chance of rain and storms. Um, the sun is out and then the sun goes away and the sun comes out and uh, basically I have just a few hours to try to get this job done today so hopefully we don't get rained out um, but let's uh, let's do this let's take a look assess the situation and we'll go ahead and replace the valve cover gasket on this uh, on this sop all right so here's what we're working with again this is a two liter four cylinder this one's turbocharged now this engine you know this Saab technically being like uh, a GM car I guess in a way uh, from this era this is similar setup to the Ecotech engines so just about everything that's done that we need to do is probably going to be similar to that of the Ecotech engine so the first thing that we need to do is remove this uh, cover and that's going to be with these Torx bits here. I'm not sure what size they are yet, but we need to do that. Now, I did remember to bring the impact home from work. Problem is, I forgot to bring the battery that was on the charger. So hopefully the battery left, life left on this will be okay. <clears throat> also brought home these Torx bit sets. So let's see. What are you? Too big. Okay, so you're smaller than that. I think it's you, yeah, and you are a T30. If the battery on the impact dies while we're doing this, no big deal. I just figured I knew time was gonna be a little limited today. So I just wanted to bring, make sure I brought it home so that way it's, you know, faster. These are hot, holy crap. It doesn't help that, you know, we were like 100 degrees today engine's still hot. So this should just come off. Yeah, there's a little, some little grommets down there at the bottom that it fits into. Set that there. And yeah, there's some seepage. I see. I see. Okay. Alright. Alright. I don't like these gloves. I spent $26 on this box of gloves. First time I've used them. And they feel like paper. They're gonna tear in no time. Um, so the next thing we need to do, according to service data, is we need to take this uh, air cleaner tube and cover off. It'd be easier to do if it wasn't so hot. There it goes. Yeah, see, so. That's coming out, that's how you disconnect it. So once that's pulled out, 
think it's as far as it goes. We should be able to yeah, unplug it. So there's that. And that's probably going to be a 7. Alright, so just loosen that up. That should be loose enough for that to wiggle out of there. Then we need a, another Torx bit to get the GM air filter cover off. GM air filter covers are a pain, man, in a lot of their cars. More recent cars, anyway. Here we go, that's a T20, T25. Those should stay in there, if I'm not mistaken. There should be grommets on them that keep them from coming out all the way. That's it. There we go. Voila. While we're at it, let's take a look at this air filter. Eh, it's dark. It's not the worst though, but it's it's almost time for a new one. You know what? We'll just take that out just so nothing happens to it. We'll we'll set it. All right, so there's that. Look, I didn't even do anything yet. It's already torn. I'm probably just gonna end up taking these off for this project. Plus it's hot, and I think because of uh, how hot it is, it's sticking and it's making it tighter, and that's why it's tearing. So I think we're gonna dish the gloves this time. Okay, the next thing to do, we have these fuel lines here, and these fuel lines are in this retainer. Uh, there might be Another one, yeah, there's two retainers, I think so. I think both of those have to be removed. So what we need to do is to carefully, very carefully, try to get these uh, yeah, fuel lines out of this retainer. So that's just that. It looks like it's just that. This bottom one too, I think. Yeah, that's an evap hose, but I think it's connected to the same thing. We'll leave that in there for now. It is plastic and we do not want it to break, especially with how hot it is. Try to get the. Is that in anything? Um, maybe, maybe not. But anyway, okay, so this bolt here, that's part of the retainer, and there's another bolt there. Um, so those have to come out, and I think we need to try to get the retainer out of there. So chances are we do have to remove that line from there also. Yeah, I think so. So let's see if we can carefully snake it through. We did, yay. And this one's a little harder to get to. Oh boy. Come on, would you? There we go, all right. Success. So, so those, the evap line here goes into the bottom, and then these two fuel lines up here on the top pretty much line up to the one there. So let's get rid of those. Those are probably tens from the looks of it. Let's see if I'm right. Is it ten? Ten it is. Okay, there's one, and the other one's right behind the intake pipe. You know, it's a good idea to have a magnet nearby because if, it, if your screws get you know thrown into a weird spot and you can't get them or you just don't want to lose them this one is there we go then that's that's a good thing to do with a, a job like this so this retainer I do believe should come out It attached to something else. Shouldn't be. I think the lines are just keeping it tight against the thing, but we could probably work with without removing that. We just have to get the bolts out because the bolts are attached to the valve cover. 
So that that's a, a must. We at least have to get rid of that. So we'll just leave it like that for now. We got the lines out, so it's loose. And we'll see if we could just work around it for now. We have to get the uh, ignition coils out. And all of the coils are under this plate here. So there's four of these. And these are uh, T30s, like the engine cover. Oh, and these are loose also. There's no ground, so try not to lose them. They're also extremely hot. <laughs> That's one thing about the gloves that I like, is when I wear the gloves, the heat doesn't bother you as bad when you're touching something hot. So that comes off, again, pretty hot, because it's metal. And there's your ignition coils there. So, uh, looks like they're tens there also, so there's a 10 millimeter bolt holding each coil on. And I don't think these are, yeah, these come out. So set them aside so you don't lose them. And then these should just pull off. Yep. So that's going to be one. This will be two. This will be three. I don't see any oil on the boots. So our new valve cover kit comes with... Uh, um, gaskets for the um, you know for these boots spark plug boots hers doesn't seem to be leaking uh, so the boots look dry and that's good I don't see any oil in the uh, where the spark plugs are so if you leave these connected and I guess I will because there's enough room to move them over you can't really mess them up each you know the longest one is obviously going to be cylinder one and then the next longest one will be two and three. And, you know, so you, you can't really mess them up, but looks like we have enough room to actually move them over here. And yeah, that, so that should be fine. We'll just leave them sitting there like that. I wanted to take them off, but um, that'll do. All right, so there's that. The next thing on the list, we need to disconnect this crankcase vent tube. This might be a two-handed job, especially with this pipe in the way. So we gotta try to squeeze this clamp here. I don't know if these little pliers are gonna do it. I'm gonna have to go get another pair of pliers. There we go. Alright. Oh, it's coming off. Sweet. Alright, so I was actually able to get it off by just doing that. So we got that there. Try to put it somewhere. Be careful with it though, obviously. It's, it's old at this point. <laughs> and then we need to get this cable ducked off. And uh, they're referring to this thing. I believe this is where all these wires and cables are going to. They're also tens. So that worked. Get your magnet. Because of course the one fell in to where you probably can't really get your fingers in there. We'll use it for that one too. Okay, and then we sh should just be able to lift it out, yeah, like this. See? So, once that's lifted up, it's a little tighter on this side, I think, because of the, you know, other stuff there. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's a, uh, there's another bolt there. Nice. That helps. There we go. Put that with the other one. That helps, there we go. It's not gonna come all the way off, but I think you just need to have the room. Is there another one? It's a little tight over here. Be careful, keep that in mind. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so just get them off the studs. See, so now you can actually get to the other bolts and such for the valve cover. The next step is to remove the heat shield over the turbocharger. Um, 
Yeah, I bet that thing's piping hot at this time. Look at those bolts. Ooh. And I could see why the, the heat shield kind of overlaps a little bit on the uh, valve cover. I don't think we'll have to actually remove the heat shield. Maybe if we just take the bolts out, if they'll come out, and uh, the cover's loose, then we can maneuver it through that way. Let's see if they're tens. Oh, wow. Well, that came out a lot better than I was expecting. Uh, get your magnet. <laughs> don't make any sudden moves. That's in there. Get this other one here. Wow, those came out really easy. Whew. It's still, still threaded in a little bit. Try just a little more. Uh, 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 oh, and there it goes. It hit the ground. It hit the ground. Thought it did. If not, we'll fish around. It's not like it hit the ground. Maybe it landed on the cradle. All right, so from there, now it's time to remove the valve cover. So there are bolts everywhere. There's one, two, three, four, five right here underneath those wires, six, Seven, eight, nine, yeah, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and I think I counted that one. So I think there's 14 that we have to go around and uh, do. Whew, God, it's hot. All right. So we'll try to get this one first. Are they 10s? Uh, they are also 10s from the looks of it. Um, just so you know, it's probably good practice to uh, use an air wand and blow dirt and debris away before you open this up. I don't have an air wand. I don't have anything to do that with. So just be extremely careful. Alright, so there's one. Two. They look like they're loose, so make sure they don't fall out. Three. Or while we're over here, try to get the one under the air tube. Okay, five. One here. Six. Seven. And right here behind the heat shield. What was that eight? Nine. Oh, that's a tough one because that cable. There we go. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. And fourteen. That should be all of them. All right, so I got all of the bolts out. This is what they look like. These were all the ones from the outside of the valve cover. And these were the four that were on the inside of it near the spark plug tubes. Um, they all look the same. They've got these rubber grommets on them. I don't know if her new, uh, she ordered the head gasket, or head gasket, valve cover gasket. So I don't know if what she ordered came with these grommets or not. If not, no big deal, but some of them were fallen out some of them I had to pull out so I just wanted to make sure they were all out so nothing got lost so at this point we should be able to get this valve cover off it's still pretty toasty so from here I'm just double checking to make sure we're not missing anything we got all that that's not a it's not a bolt for that yeah yeah I see this dude here. I'm not sure what that is. 
it's in the valve cover. So, hmm, I wonder if that should come off. Carefully try to see if we can pry around to get it to come up. Because I bet it's probably baked on there pretty good with how old this thing is. Just gotta try to find a good place to do it. Hmm. All right. Okay, so after some prying and the use of this other hand when I'm not recording, you can get the valve cover off. So while we're here, we can take a look at the inside of this uh, you no know, engine. Uh, it doesn't look too bad from what I can see. I don't see a whole lot of sludge. I see a little bit of sludge build up here. Yeah, so it actually looks pretty decent. The lobes look good. They look shiny. They don't look like they're really scored or anything. So she's only had the car for a couple of years. So, the, you know, the majority of its life it's been with somebody else or other people. Don't know if the timing was ever done on it, the timing chain, but there doesn't seem to be any slack in the chain from what I can see. So the Ecotech engines are known for having timing issues. These guides will break, then you got slack in the chain, and eventually that could be the very end of the engine. So yeah, it actually uh, it looks pretty good in there. Like I said, we're doing an oil change also, once everything's put back together. Uh, the underside of the cover, oh my gosh, it's very hot. Again, still not too bad. Not bad at all. So our gasket is embedded in the uh, valve cover here. It's slotted in, so we have to peel it out. And then these are the spark plug gaskets here around the edges of the spark plug uh, tube holes. So this is the part that nobody likes to do, and that's the cleaning. So we need to obviously get the gasket out of here. Um, it might be a pain because it's probably rock hard. I need some needle nose pliers or a pick to start getting to it. Yeah. So we're going to pull the gaskets out of that and then we have to come over here. We have to make sure that our surface is clean. Make sure there's no other pieces of gasket stuck to it, which in most cases with this particular type of gasket, I don't think the gaskets really stick all that much, so uh, should not be an issue. Getting around this area down in here is going to be the problem um, because of how low it is and these tubes in the way, but I'll manage. And you can too. Make sure you clean up around the spark plugs as well, where the new gasket's going to go. So for that task, um, I did bring a gasket scraper home in case I needed it but um, I might I might try to clean off with brake clean first so I just brought some brake clean Eric O's preferred brand not a sponsor <laughs> and uh, some shop towels and then uh, you know we'll just spray spray the brake clean on the towel not on the head spray it on the towel and then just wipe along the edges carefully and see if it you know how well that's that dirt and oil and stuff cleans off and um, once I see what it looks like then if I need the scraper and try to you know scrape some stuff off we will but that should be okay and if you're using these like I am make sure if it tears or anything you do not leave any pieces in this engine that could be catastrophic so do not be very careful when you're using shop towels like that all right guys so I came into the house into the basement to do this part because I had to get out of the sun. It is, it is bad out there. I'm already turning red. All right, so we're gonna try to get this out. Like I said, we're just gonna try to maybe grasp it with some pliers in certain spots. It's probably in there really well because of how old it is. It's probably the original gasket. Does that have a lip on it? It does, there we go. Okay, so how lucky are we gonna get 
Alright, so it's coming up. So let's see what we can do. Okay. Alright, so once you get it going, it actually comes up pretty decently. This is almost pretty satisfying, just doing this. <laughs> it's like, ooh. Come on. There we go. All right, cool. So, none of it ripped off, none of it broke, so that's good. Um, so, we can discard that, I'll just throw it there for now. And now we gotta do the ones for the um, spark plug tubes. I think I tore that one, but let's see. Oh, nope, there we go. Okay. Alright, so here's what we got as far as our valve cover itself. So I went ahead and brake cleaned it, tried to pick in the groove where the new gaskets are going. And this is about as best as I can get it with brake clean. So, uh, looks better. There really wasn't any sludge, uh, you know, buildup on this uh, valve cover. So. I mean, what's, you know, stained and stuff, not a big deal. I didn't really have to clean it <clears throat> because, like I said, there was really no sludge or anything. But, you know, might as well try to make it look good <laughs> for what it is. Uh, so now it's time to put our new gasket on. And she ordered Victor Rhines. Never heard of him. Um, but she did her research, and she said a lot of Saab users use this brand. I am honestly more of a Felpro guy myself but again if you need to order these this is the part number so yeah go ahead and get it situated important thing to doing these is on the gasket itself usually the part that is um, elongated I guess that's typically the part that would go into the groove of the actual valve cover, so you just want to make sure that you start at a point, make sure you got your gasket going the correct direction. Uh, in this case, the timing side is here, so this is the front, and these have notches and stuff on them also, so you got to make sure that all that is uh, also seated properly inside the notch. Going this way. And I guess just start pushing it in. Try not to leave any gaps because you need this to fit, you know, 100% for the most part. <laughs> kind of walk it down the line. You shouldn't have any gasket sticking up. It should all be perfectly smooth and flat when you're doing these types of gaskets. Okay, we're almost at the finish line. I'm just going to go around once more, make sure everything is pushed down in place. So that's what it should look like. Nothing's sticking up, there's no bumps, it's all nice and smooth. So 
So now we just got to do the same thing to the spark plug uh, holes as well. And there we go. So the valve cover itself is complete. Now we just have to go back out to the hot afternoon sun and uh, clean up the block. All right, so quite some time later. <laughs> um, just wanted to make sure that we got it uh, all cleaned up as best as we could. And this is the best that I can do. Um, the leak, I'm pretty sure, was originating from this side of the engine. So there was a lot of stuff built up, like dirt and sludge, around these corners here. So it was very time consuming to get you know a majority of all that out uh, to the best that I can I can do and uh, that's it we did our, our spark, spark plug whole surfaces are good the rest of the gaskets good these valleys down here really weren't that uh, as hard to clean off as I was expecting I had a harder time getting the corners over here but down here really wasn't so bad so our surfaces are all cleaned up we've got our gasket of course ready to go and now get to play the game of getting the valve cover back on okay so with the valve cover on now um, you know I went through tried to look to see you know, made sure the gasket wasn't coming off anywhere and um, we're good so it doesn't appear like the gaskets any of the gaskets were falling out of the uh, you know the, the side I was trying to feel around back here because I can't see but I don't feel anything sticking out. I don't see anything. So our cover is on. And our gasket looks like it is seated in place. So the kit that she ordered didn't come with the um, grommets. Which not that big a deal. But I'm going to start with the um, inside bolts. There's no torque pattern that I seen on uh, the service data, but we're going to uh, kind of do inside, outside sequence. And I believe the torque spec was eight foot pounds. I'll have to look again. So we got all of our bolts in. We're just gonna use this to snug them up. So I'm not gonna go crazy on them. So we'll just start here. Tough one because of the wiring loom thing. And we'll hit this one up. Oh, lost traction there. These are in the way. Come on. And then the one under this pipe. Come on. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> so they should all be down at this point. And now uh, I'll get my torque wrench and let me double check. I'm pretty sure it was eight foot pounds. Yes, eight foot pounds. And I'm going to torque them down in the same way that I just did it with the uh, gun. Figured the gun might have, you know, gotten them to at least eight. So. Okay. 
Okay, so they're all at eight. All right, so now we can begin the full um, procedure of putting everything back together. So we could start by getting this pain in the butt loom back on its studs. There we go. Okay, and those were the uh, 10 millimeters, the, uh, the nuts. I'm actually really surprised that the rain has held off so far. Thought for sure I wasn't gonna have any luck. <laughs> All right, so that's on. Uh, let's get our crankcase breather tube back on too. Definitely don't wanna forget that. We'll need the pliers, but at least get it in place. And now we need to put the one bolt that I have left for this heat shield. Um, the other one didn't hit the ground apparently, but it's okay, well, if this is easy to get to. Um, well, we can get another one if it doesn't fall out once the car moves, but, so we put your heat shield bolts back in. Um, now we can do our coils. So, let's straighten our coils out. This dude will obviously be number one. This dude will be number two. This one here will be three. And the shortest one is four. So make sure these wires are up over so they actually fit in. Okay. Push them down, make sure the bolt holes line up. And then we'll take our four 10 millimeters for these. They're all 10s. Actually makes it pretty easy. I'm kind of surprised. Okay, coils are in. Along with that, we can put this cover back on. It'll go on like that. And those were the uh, four of the Torx bits. I don't remember exactly what size they were, but they were Torx. So now we get to play with this fuel rail bracket. I actually moved it down some so I can get the valve cover on more. So I gotta try to bring it up onto the top again, like that. Both holes lined up. Nope, this one has to come up more. There we go. We can put this evap hose back in its spot. One there, on the bottom here. Bring our fuel lines down, they kinda came up some. Oh, that dude popped out of the thing, so we can fix that here. Push. Here we go. Okay. And those were also tens. Two tens. Working around this thing was probably the biggest pain in the butt, to be quite honest. Okay, and you push your fuel lines into the clips. There we go. So all of that stuff is secure. She did request that I spray some mass airflow sensor cleaner on the mass airflow sensor uh, before I put it in. So I already undid the bolts. And we'll just slide it out. And I'll uh, spray it out real quick with uh, the proper mass airflow sensor cleaner. Never, never use anything else when you're cleaning your mass airflow sensor. All right, so now it's air cleaner assembly time. Get that bad boy in there. We got our mass airflow sensor already connected back up. This might be a two hand job. Get that into there. Maybe not. There we go, nice and easy. Let's 
squeeze. There you go. Okay, and then I got the bit on there. That was the uh, T25. No need to go crazy on these. They're only going into plastic. Come on. That's it. Okay, and then, and then there it goes. So that's plugged in. There we go. And I do believe the final thing is the beauty cover. But I'm not going to put the beauty cover on yet. Crankcase hose, fuel lines are back in their proper place. That was really it. The only thing we're missing is that bolt for that uh, heat shield. But we'll have to deal with that a little bit later. But yeah, so let's go ahead and run it. I just want to make sure we have no uh, leaks. I wish I could clean all that off over here. I can't really get to everything, so it's kind of hard to tell, but um, I think I'll be able to tell if it's something fresh. So, um, yeah, so everything is back in place. Let's go ahead and give it a start. And uh, keep our fingers crossed that it's all good. I love the color of this car. This is a sweet color. It's got the black stripe, too. Oh, it's nice. It actually drives pretty nice. I've never actually driven a Saab. Oh, I lied. It's got 189,000. I thought it was 186. Got our key over here. Let's go ahead and give it a start and see. Uh, make sure there's nothing new coming up. That's cool. That's a record player. I don't see anything new. It's hard to tell back there. I think it's going to be okay. I'll let it run for a while and uh, then we'll get ready to do the oil change on it. She got some boom in the back. <laughs> All right, so it's been on for a few more minutes. I think the valve cover was a success. Like I said, it is kind of hard to tell with some of the old markings that were here. Unfortunately, can't really clean all of it up. But, I think it's gonna be okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut it down. Okay, so I think I need to take a break. Cause, again, it's, it's getting hotter out here even though the sun went away. And, uh, and then I think we'll do the, uh, we'll get to the oil. All right guys, we're back. So we're gonna do the oil change now. This is much like an older GM Ecotec engine, um, pretty much to a T. Um, have to remove that engine cover again though to get to the 
oil filter. And we're gonna get to that first. So you need your specially shaped 32. Pop that thing on there. Now let's go ahead and get underneath and drain it. So it's a 15. Doesn't look too bad. Some of it actually still has a little bit of clarity to it. The smaller stream does anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's got a little bit of clarity in it, so. Not awful, looks normal. Actually looks pretty decent under here. I don't see anything leaking. I mean, other than what was left over from the valve cover issue up there, but I don't see anything really leaking. Transmission looks like it's in good shape. Axle seal's not leaking on that side. Yeah, pretty cool. So we'll go ahead and let this drain out. I gotta confirm exactly how much oil goes back into this engine. So we'll just let that drain and We'll fill it up and ship it. All right, we'll go ahead and button it up. That's about all that's gonna come out of it. This beast does take a whole six quarts of oil. Ah, nice and snug, all right. So just like the old days, one of the more most important things to do with these style oil filters is getting that ring off, replacing it with the new one. So get that off, pitch it. New filter. comes with a new ring. Put that on, make sure it makes its way all the way up to the proper groove. And that's flush, like that. And when you tighten these also, I know I've said this before, don't super tighten it, because it's plastic, again. So once it's snug, just give it another little twist like that, and that's good enough. <coughs> uh oh, the socket got stuck. There it goes. All right. All right, so like I said, this is taking all six quarts where we have today. We've got the actual mobile one which is what is recommended for sobs. Uh, so 5W30. I didn't buy it. She, she had already bought this stuff. So hopefully they gave her the right stuff, the right viscosity. I think they did. I think these engines are 530, if I remember correctly, like when my mom had her Malibu and it was an Ecotec, basically. So um, let's go ahead and put it in. Okay. 
and it is sitting off of the ground so um, checking it really isn't going to make that all that much sense now but we'll go ahead and start it up get it off the ramps shut it off check it check for leaks I think that spot there was from the uh, thing. But I don't see anything dripping, so plug's good. Let's go ahead and give it a start. I honestly don't know if this thing has an oral life monitor. I can try to look, but I'm not sure. It's got a message center up there, but I don't know if, if it's got the oil life, so we'll, we'll check. Here we go. Okay, no oil pressure light. Sounds good. Our oil cap down there looks pretty good. No leaks. Double check down here. No leaks. Move your brick. And now we'll carefully get it off the ramps. I know that's gonna, you're gonna hear the front scrape a little bit on the plastic ramp. But it's okay. Nice and slow. No, that wasn't that bad. Okay. So now it's on the ground. We got a run in, so we'll go ahead and shut it off. And then we'll check the uh, level. Alright, guys. So I got about three minutes of camera memory left. And none of the stuff's been saved to the computer. So we're going to wrap it up. Put the cover back on. Check the oil. It is in the full position, full mark, so it's good there. Caps on, added uh, the coolant that she provided up to the, the cool mark. It's still relatively cool, it hasn't been running for a while, so all that's done. Let's go ahead and shut this hood, make sure we don't have any tools hidden up here, and we're good. Let's go ahead and shut it. So now, to reset this oil life monitor, all your doors have to be closed, I guess, everything. Turn it to the on position, but don't start the car. Put some windows down, because it is roasting in here. And then there's a customize and this little rotary knob here. And uh, you can also push this as an okay. So on this driver information display, if we hit customize, we should have a menu. Then we rotate the knob to system settings, hit OK. Scroll down till we see service info and service data. And it doesn't give me the option to reset it. Hmm. Weird. It's at 79%. If we hold it, nope, just takes me back to that. If we hit clear, can we hold clear? Nope, that takes me back also. Hmm. So I'm honestly not sure how to reset the service data, apparently. Um, I'll have to look into that a little bit longer. So I guess from what I read, the, the reset or uh, oil change uh, warning actually has to be on, I guess, to reset that from what I was seeing. This was only at 79%, so the change oil reminder hasn't come on. And uh, I guess that's why I can't reset it. I don't know. But anyway, we got an oil change done. We did the valve cover gasket. I think she's going to be a happy ride. And my stepsister is going to be happy too. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. Check out teespring.com slash stores slash Mike's Fugle Spotlight for all of your MVS and vlog merchandise. That's all that I've got for today. So, I will see you guys next time. Thank you again for watching. My camera is about to run out of memory. <laughs> Thank you again for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.